Hi everyone. <clears throat> I'm in a talkative mood, you may say. Put this down to one of my ramblings. Seeing the early versions of the Cactus Societies, in particular the Yorkshire one, which I've just been talking about, it has brought back a lot of memories. And I thought, well, you know, a lot of you don't know me, obviously. Some of you do, some of you don't. And um, you probably think, oh, he seems to talk about a load of things, whether they're all right or wrong. I don't know. Anyhow, today I thought I would give you a little insight into the early days more or less connected with the the hobby of cacti. I haven't even mentioned these societies yet. And how it all started. Well, here goes. When I was at school, in the junior school, <laughs> a long time ago, granted, I would go to a neighbour and her son, we would go with her son to the local school. Well, in her house, she had some very unusual plants. I didn't know what they were. They were, in fact, Mammillaria gracilis. And I was very interested in these. I thought, well, they grow very slow. And that, I suppose, initially was why I started the interest. Also, I had a, a geography book which showed barrel cacti given a car wash, a bit of a, a vivid imagination that showed a large barrel cactus, probably a ferro cactus, with water spurting out of it. And that added to the interests. Well, this went on, let's say, for years, not years. It must have been the age, well, I was at junior school, so what would I have been? I'd have been pre 11 because I wasn't even in uh, the secondary school. I wasn't lucky enough to get to uh, grammar school on the fact that I'm number blind and that particular thing has held me back a long way but not to worry I must have been below 11 <clears throat> always been interested I knew nothing about societies particularly cactus societies it wasn't until I went to visit my aunt in Manor Park and she was looking after uh, some plants yeah, cacti and succulents. They belong to a Mr. Ringrose. That was the name I was given. What rel relative this is, I don't know. He probably wasn't a relative. But anyhow, he, he had one particular plant there which I really liked. And it was a Cereus Pitahaya monstrosus. Probably should have been named Cereus Jamacru. Montrose. It was a Montrose plant. Anyhow, I had that for many years. I don't know what happened to it. It's sort of lost in time. Well, anyhow, it was through her. She said to you, why don't you try and contact a Mr. Balder? Oh, I didn't, obviously didn't know a Mr. Balder. And, um, she suggested the society, which in London was the Cactus and Succulent Society of Great Britain. Well, several years after that, I think I was early teens, 14 or 15, I can't get the exact date, but it goes back a few a while. I decided to join, as a junior member, uh, that society. My father thought I was clean round the bend, probably why he gave me the name Harpic, clean round the bend. 
But then that's another story. My cousin said to my father, no, let him join it. It would be the best thing he's ever done. So, yeah, I was allowed to join. And um, I paid my money. The meetings were up at Westminster, which where I lived at the time was South London, uh, Wimbledon area, Wimbledon Chase to be exact. My grand grandfather said to me, if you go to any of those meetings, make sure you go straight there, no diverts, it's in Victoria, go to the meeting, after the meeting come straight back. Mind you, in those days things were safer, but even not 100% safe, so he was worried about my safety. And uh, I got the train at Victoria, I think at Victoria, changed at Waterloo, was it be? Yeah, Waterloo, and on the local train back to my local station, which was Wimbledon Chase. So that was a story of how it all began. Mind you, as a junior member, I was new. I knew nothing about the plants. <laughs> Not that I particularly know much more. But anyhow, um, I used to sit at the back of the hall. It was in the lecture theatre of the RHS at Vincent Square, that was the name of the of the area, Vincent Square. And um, you would have experts come on talking about the plants. A lot of the stuff they were talking went completely over my head. You know, they give loads of names and I thought, well, why have they got all these funny names? Obviously learnt that later what they meant, the names. And, um, yeah, there were good meetings. And then at a later date, some of the meetings, you had colour transparencies. They would show you colour slides of the plants, and they were very interesting. They may have been over here. They may have been a travelogue type in the States. Who knows, but... The, the meetings were good. They also had a little branch show. And this particular time they, and this was Arthur Baldy, he said, oh, uh, this was at the previous meeting, said, next meeting we've got, we got dwarf apuntias. So I thought, oh, right, I'll bring one of those along. Ah, silly me. A dwarf apuntia, he meant the little tiny ones, the... Uh, hernias and and stuff like that not the large growing apuntias anyway I, I brought in this large apuntia I think it was apuntia erinacea quite a large plant and I brought that in and the remark I got was oh that don't look like a dwarf uh, a small plant and I think when they realised it was me they were sort of a bit apologetic I didn't realize that I didn't know all that much about it because I was a brand new member well that was another experience also you it was a place where you could pick up the odd plant there was always someone there selling plants the ones I remember was uh, Ronnie Dale I don't think any of these but these were alive still he was a draftsman in North London or that area and he had some beautiful plants, beautifully labelled. They really were good plants. It was Ronnie Dale and they were reasonably priced. I remember going up, up uh, and buying some of his, his plants. Now, about this time, I was inf informed that there was a local branch near where I lived. When I say near where I lived, it was in Sutton or North Cheam. North Surrey was the name of the branch and it was run by a Mr Bill Madams. And I thought, yeah, I'd, I'd love to go there. 
So, also, meetings were added to by going to the local branch. And yeah, they were nice. As far as I can remember, it was held in the Red Lion pub in Cheam Village. Pretty sure I'm right. And, um, okay, I was only a kid then, so really, it, it wasn't, it, it, although it was in the pub itself, it was a room connected to the pub, so there was no drinks or anything. But it was a nice warm room, and they had a lovely fire. It was really nice. So that was the local, local branch. Also at that time, a leaflet came around. It was a small, several page leaflet from a nursery starting up in Sheffield. And that was the nursery of Fern. Brian Fern, when he started his nursery up. And um, they had a lot of plants on offer, on offer through that. I can remember that. Yeah, hey, what else can I remember? There's so many things, they come rushing to me the whole time. But those were the early days, and the days I remember fairly well. Um, also, at that time, I kept fish, uh, tropical fish. Well, going to the meeting at Vincent Square, you used to walk along, I think it was Vauxhall Bridge Road. And on the way, I passed a very good aquarium shop, Tackbrook Tropicals. Don't know if they're there still, I don't think they are. And um, they were always worth a look inside. And you'd often get other members of the society would stop off and they would look inside. So it was quite good. I believe Bob Reed from North Surrey would often be there because he he uh, liked his he had fish ponds in his garden so he was off, often there but I, as I say I remember those I'm not letting these ramblings go on too long I can add to them on, a, on another edition it's whether it's wanted or not I don't know as I said before, I can talk a long time, and I've got too many hobbies. I can't get out of them now, I've got them. But this is the more or less devoted to cacti and succulents. And also, my father built me a greenhouse in the garden, which held the plants. So... It was a case of moving plants from indoors. I had a few indoors. I had a Puntia, in, well, it was called Imbricata. I don't think it was that. That was on the label. A Puntia Imbricata. It was a very, um, what can I say, very fragile plant. It was probably a Puntia frag fragilis. I remember that one. I had Echeverias. And a lot of the plants I grew on uh, the balcony roof. I had like a balcony roof. And in the summertime, they were ideal. They grew well. I remember another plant I had was Euernia pendula. It was said of Euernia pendula. It, it wasn't, in fact. It was um, another species entirely. I probably got the name wrong on that one. I'm not too sure. As I say, please excuse me, my memory is not as good as it used to be. It goes back a lot of time and remembers things, but can't remember everything. So that's what the uh, the plants was. And then obviously starting with the plants in the greenhouse, I had a, a little paraffin heater. Originally it was, um, I think it was a small one inch Aladdin, which was a blue flame, which was very, very good, but you had to be very careful. You had to have the wick up too high, or else it would smoke and fill the greenhouse up with smoke and turning everything black. 
which um, yeah I experienced that as well you soon learn and in those days winters appeared to be colder than they are now I know in the 60s we had a very cold winter but that's another story anyhow I'm going to stop talking now because it's a so if anyone wants to hear more of my ramblings into the hobbit but particularly with the the plants as i say it <laughs> brings back lots of memories and lots of shows that i've been to shows we put on with the african succulent plant society um we toured around uh, the names of i can't think of his name but well, Cyril Parr was one of the leading lights. He uh, formed the, or was it the, the in inspiration for the African Succulent Plant Society. Uh, David, was it David? Probably got the name wrong. It was a Mr. Watling. David Watling? No, I've got the name wrong. It was a, it was a Mr. Watling. I can't always remember the names. He was very keen to start a, uh, a collection, a national collection, which was um, quite the thing at the time. This was before uh, Clive Innes had his, his collection going, although the exotic collection, the Neils, uh, down in Worthing, they were obviously going, they'd been going for, for quite a few years. So that was that. So I can talk about that and the places we visited, putting the shows on. They were very, very enjoyable. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. So if anyone else wants to hear any more of my ramblings, uh, let me know. If you don't, say so. And I won't. So um, that's as far as I go with this one. Thanks again for putting up with my ramblings. Um, I suppose this is all sparked by the fact that I got that or got those early journals of the Yorkshire Cactus Society. It all brings back memories. Well, it say so brings back memories. It brings back memories of the earlier days, and uh, they've, a lot of them are good memories. Some of the newer memories are not so clear. But anyhow, that's where it goes. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.